Hello fellow pilots, I'm Mike Dropain and this is the first episode of new series of movies How to Play. In this episode we will talk about J21RB, which is premium plane, tier 8, European Tech 3 multi-role fighter. Let's briefly talk about the history of this plane before we get started. And it's not the plane which been only on paper a project or one prototype flying. It was actually a plane which get into the service and have career in Swedish Air Force. Saab 21R was a Swedish fighter developed and produced by Saab, a very well known, I guess, uh, motor company. The first prototype Saab 21R uh, first flew on 10th of March of 1947. During 1947, Saab began converting the piston engine uh, J21S to prop and uh, sorry to jet engine, uh, and that was a British source uh, the Havilland Goblin turbojet engine, which replaced DB605B. Uh, this acquired uh, each aircraft to be uh, extensively modifi modified. So 30 of these airplanes was, uh, were designed as a J21RB, which we have in a game, uh, which um, power and they've been powered by Swedish built engine Goblin 3 uh, or the different name RM1A engine. Uh, the production run of 124 aircraft, uh, and uh, that includes the uh, four prototypes, but uh, Saab J29 new aircraft was flying by October 1948, so the order was reduced to 60 of uh, J21. And uh, all uh, J21 were eventually converted to the attack aircraft instead of the fighters, um, as uh, uh, two different types. One was uh, J21RA and another one we have in the game J21RB. It's depending on the type of engine which they had. Um, no original examples survive uh, the service or until this time uh, after being taken out of service. However, in 1990, a group of uh, volunteers rebuilt this plane and now it's available to uh, uh, viewers in Swedish Air Force Museum. Um, what is interesting here, uh, the armament of this plane is exactly the same as we have in a game, except rockets, which uh, this plane has a variety of different caliber available. Now, um, let's get back into the game. Okay, so that's the European Tech Tree, which actually have only premium planes in it, uh, so there is nothing to grind. But there is one important thing to say uh, from those who don't know, if you buy any of these planes from this tech tree, you can change uh, nation for this plane. So technically that means you can train any other pilot of any other nation you have in those premiums. So if I buy, for example, this J21RB today, all I need to do is just go to the hangar, then go to the modules, and in the modules you will have here the options change your country and you can pick it up any other nation. And for 100,000 silver, you can change this plane for um, that nation. And then a uh, pilot from this particular nation will ca can fly this uh, without any penalties and gain extra um, exp, exp for his training. So this is very useful. And uh, if you don't have any premiums and you want to buy any premiums, I highly recommend to take a look into this Euro European tech tree. If there is anything that can interest you, I recommend that because that give you this option to train any other nation pilot as well. Now let's get into the juicy details and numbers. We start from firepower. So this plane has 20 mm cannon and four heavy machine guns. Um, cannon and two heavy machine guns are mounted in a nose section here, and two other heavy machine guns are in uh, wings. And that gives you uh, 20 points of firepower, which is the worst result from all other multi role fighter on tier 8. Um, 20 mm 20 mm cannon have range 720 meters, typical standard range, and heavy machine guns as well, 560. So that will do if you get behind someone or you taken out the defense aircraft over a, any sector. That will do, of course. In and even those 12.7, as you well know, they are not overheating too quickly, so that's a kind of plus. But uh, Overall, you can't really afford to go head-on attacks with any other multi-role fighter, uh, only in some circumstances where they have low HP, of course. Even some uh, fighters will have more firepower than you, so head-on attacks are absolutely uh, 
the last thing you want to do in this plane. Now, next thing is very exciting, uh, it's bomb and rockets. We have 10 14.5 cm rockets in this plane. Um, total damage of these rockets is 16,000 uh, points, but I have here 17,600 because of the special uh, skill of the pilot, expert of explosions. And the uh, reload time is amazing as well, basically 60 seconds. I have that a little bit less, 55, because I have special module here um, to speed up this reload. And after you get the specialization of the plane, you can upgrade this module even more, so this number will go down as well. And I highly recommend that because those rockets are really good and you're definitely gonna uh, use those, you wanna use those rockets in a game to get better points, better results and effects for the game. So, um, important information as well for a skill pilot who's gonna use those rockets, not only for uh, air, for ground targets, which they are very good for, uh, but as well as for ground targets, you're gonna use them for aerial targets, and that's why you need to remember that range of them, 1160 meters range of these rockets. Um, range of explosion is 40 meters and damage for one rocket is 1600 points. So uh, mo mainly you need to know the range of the rocket basically. After, after this range, this rocket will explode. So uh, sometimes you can take out the aerial target with um, direct hit, you just hit the, you just uh, fire the rockets and you directly hit the enemy plane. And another time you just, you're gonna aim um, on front of the enemy bomber, for example, or b enemy bomber formation, and you can fire those rockets and take it out by explosion around this plane um, happening. So they will cause damage and taking out the uh, enemy f airplane. Of course, head-on attacks, you can use the rockets in head-on attacks as well. Uh, that could be uh, useful. But as I said, this is this is really a big advantage of this plane, this fast reload and pretty decent uh, rockets. So you're going to use them a lot if you want to have these good results in a game. Now, quick example how to use those rockets in practice. Just take a look. As you can see, it is possible, uh, it is as well very difficult, so you need a lot of practice, but I highly recommend that um, to practice this and eventually you get good in it, so you can use those rockets against aerial target if need, and that will be very beneficial to you. Um, and uh, let's go to another topic, which is uh, survivability and speed. So. Uh, HP pool is 400, which is pretty normal and uh, pretty standard. A lot of uh, any other, um, lot of other uh, multi-role fighter have 400 HP, so it's not disadvantage, not advantage, so just pretty normal. Uh, speed is more or less the same. Uh, it's really good speed, but uh, other multi-role fighters, go, of course, have the very uh, same or a little bit better, a little bit less uh, speed, so not a big difference. Uh, you can outrun some of the highly maneuverable um, Japanese planes, for example. Um, so you don't have to get into the turn fine, you just can outrun them, use the long boost and the maximum speed. And yeah, you can you can use that, but um, only in few, few cases like this, uh, uh, this highly maneuverable, but slow fighters can cannot catch up with you. But, but still, worth to know which plane you can outrun, which not. Um, now, most important thing, let's get into the maneuverability. This is pretty uh, interesting and important uh, to know that um, this multi lore fighter is actually pretty good maneuverability capabilities in it. Um, so, 
we have four multi door fighters with better maneuverability. So first is Supermarine Seafang. Um, this is British Tech Tree, a premium tier 8 multi door fighter. Uh, he has more po firepower, 27, 4 20 mm cannons. So as I mentioned before, actually J21RB cannot go with anyone head on, any other multi door fighter. Uh, so if the fighters will, some of the fighters have better uh, firepower um, on tier 8 than our multi roll. So, but let's get into the maneuverability. As you can see here, his turning time, uh, Sifang turning time is better, slightly better, but it is better. Uh, the same with stall speeds, slightly better. So that's mean um, you can't get into the turning fight with this. You can't outrun because more or less the same speed and you can't uh, risk head-on attacks. So basically Sifang is a deadly for you. Of course, it's a matter of specialization as well. If your J21RB is fully specialized for dogfighter, like for turning, um, and you met uh, with some Sifang which is not specialized, you can, I would say, comfortably get into the turning fight with Sifang if it's if it's not specialized one. But if we're talking about two equal planes, or both are specialized, or both are not specialized, then you can't get into the fight with this. The same story is with Hawker Tempest. It's most likely the same thing. Um, 27, which means 4 20mm cannon, and the speed is more or less the same. And maneuverability is slightly better. Um, the same stall speed, but maneuverability is better. So I wouldn't risk a uh, fight with this, because most likely you're gonna lose this. And that's not what we want. So if you see this, specifically if it's human player, because if it's a bot player, and you're sure it's a bot, um, you could take your chance and get into the fight with bot, of course. But um, because of some of the bots are really, really uh, easy to to like take it out, and um, yeah. But look, in in on paper at least, let's say those you have to be aware that those planes is gonna be better in a dogfight with you. Um, next is uh, J7W1. It's a Japanese tech tree multi roller fighter, and in this case, I think it is uh, that's the best firepower. Uh, on tier 8 in multi fighters um, it's amazing uh, and it an attempt to get head on with this I probably most of you already uh, met this plane in the battle so you know what I'm talking about it's just you're gonna disappear in seconds if you go head on with this it's four 30 millimeter cannons I believe in it so it's a de deadly um, it's the same hit points uh, more or less the same speed so you cannot outrun it um, and maneuverability is better but this is tricky because uh, his stall speed is even better 120 the same as Seafunk uh, but his average time uh, to turn 360 degrees is 10.80 so it sounds like it's the same as Seafunk uh, but it's not it's actually acting the same as a plane which been called by players Pancake it's tier 8 heavy fighter, American heavy fighter, which have stall speed uh, 80 and this plane can basically be almost like a stationary and his turning time is much better than hits on the paper and it's the same case here. So J7 and W1 have better maneuverability than it than it's looks like on the paper because when you slow down you're just turning almost uh, instantly in in a in a one spot like so you like a uh, stationary anti-aircraft cannon basically uh, that's that's how it's filled so definitely you can get into the fight with the j7 if it's uh, of course controlled by human and uh, no matter if he specialized or not uh, even if you are specialized and j7 is not i wouldn't risk to uh, get a dogfight with this one the last plane is blumenvoss p210 as you can see, he has as well better maneuverability. He has much better ra rate of roll, uh, 180 degrees per second, which is actually, I believe, the best in that year. Um, his stall speed is 200, which is much worse, but we come back to that in a second. Um, and the firepower is only 23, as you can see here, and uh, HP points 300. So some player may think, okay, I can, if you look on the paper, I can go head on with this one because uh, he have no this he had, he has less uh, HP points so I'm going to take him out quicker um and my uh, my firepower is just slightly less than 
BVP, but it's not actually uh, accurate because of this. Most of the players will choose two twenty millimeter cannons in this, and they have range eight hundred meters, so it's much more than we have. We have only one twenty millimeter cannon with a range of uh, effective fire of seven hundred twenty meters. Plus, BVP have a much better rate of fire, which is seven hundred bullets per minute and we have 420 bullets per minute and that's a big difference not mention about his uh, air to air racket so you know uh, when your racket uh, may or may not hit a head on target it's a matter of a little bit luck um, but in this thing if that if he fire his air to air racket if you go and head on with this you have 100% uh, chance that you, he gonna hit you 99, let's say. Head on attacks, big no no. Now, but there is a way to deal with this pretty plane. If you go to his maneuverability, you can see that his stall speed is 200 km per hour. Your stall speed in J21RB is 140 km per hour, so you can use that in a dogfight. Uh, slow down like to as, as close to pa as possible to 140 around 150 and uh, this plane will uh, just pass you and overshoot hopefully and pass you so you can use that or he gonna stall if he gonna try to slow down as you um, and you can use that in a dogfight to get behind him and take him out but no head on that's for sure now uh, let's get into the battle and let's talk about tactics how to use this plane in uh, uh, different kind of situations and different maps so Let's get into it. What we have here, let's take a look. Specialized ME 109TL. Okay, I head on straight for the mining factory and I try to help my team to take over that. I see we have a B29C, that's a great thing to have in your team, specifically if uh, it's a map with two mining factory. So I head on, I try to take out some, maybe um, maybe it's a good idea to take out some air defenses, specifically if the bomber is coming, um, yeah, so it's a less, um, less damage cost to your team. I still get my points and I still participate in to take over this particular um, sector but um, this guy will take it over I don't have to be worried about that he have so many bombs that he easily will take this out and I go straight for another mining factory and I see that the enemy already engaged in here and yeah there is a bomber I can try to take him out use my boost it's not too high so there is a good chance that I will take him out it's a not good thing for taking out specifically human bomber because you can easily uh, you don't have much HP, not much firepower and uh, to deal with the uh, human player which have uh, powerful um, tail gunner did I take this out? yeah good now some air defenses can go as well Look how fast reload is going. I can have racket after racket basically. 40 seconds and I have another set of rackets. I see some ground attackers coming. That's a good target for myself. Like if I let him into the mining sector and I'm gonna take him out in a sector, that's gonna be a, a nice takeover. was close now ah I need to take out something more with my rockets and that will do ah. <laughs> see I'm not an expert in it I just bought this but um, if I get more practice I should probably take up this um, this um, building or whatever was that 
with those rockets. That should be already in my team. Now let's take a look on the map. What's going on here? Um, two mining factory is great. Um, as you know or may not know, mining factory one mining factory is actually worth the same as uh, three, for example, garrisons. So. I take care of this grunt attacker, uh, so he's not gonna get my sector back for his team. As you can see, pretty often um, those machine guns set on fire uh, enemy planes, so that's a good stuff. Plus, um, the plane, um, the plane itself, it's not really easy to catch up on fire. So I have extinguisher fire extinguisher, um, but I think I'm gonna change it maybe for some. You see another another fire another fire and and the rockets and the rockets well I use them because there's nothing near me um, which I would need my rockets for so that's why I use them for this ground attacker to save my HP and take him out quicker than uh, I w I would with my machine guns and um, cannon. We have a bomber um, squad going here, this formation, sorry, bomber formation is coming. Um, hmm. Now I have to think, I know I could back to the mining factory and take out the ground attacker. Um, I could sneak behind the enemy here and try to take out this command center. That's not a bad idea as well, but as you see, just reload our mining factory just reload so i need another 30 second and another reload so that's that's a lot and you see oh pilot is down Not very good aiming. I have to be careful, not get hit with the bomb. it and another um, ground attacker is already here that that's all bots but uh, another fire see how easy it is to catch up uh, to get cause fire and then you can shice uh, I didn't pay attention my H low HP <laughs> Um, we're gonna lose this mining factory now, but it's, uh, oh, yeah, I didn't pay attention to the points either, <laughs> like, it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best, and this, is uh, that was actually easy game, um, nothing really challenging, it's not always gonna be that careful, if you're gonna have a battle with many, uh, human player in the fighters, it's gonna be much more difficult, because you are very easy target for those fighters controlled by human, and they definitely will, um, take the opportunity to take it down as an easy target, of course. So you need to stay low, um, stay undetected, and flip this focus on the typical uh, tasks for the multi-role fighters, which are flipping the zones, basically. And in this vertical plane, it's uh, it's just a main thing to do. Uh, other multi-role fighters have some privilege of firepower, which you don't, and they can engage highly maneuverable fighters at least uh, for a brief moment like you know you can get head on or just uh, simply engage and counting on that that you're gonna in first round you're gonna take him out by your superior firepower uh, but this plane doesn't have that so it can only be focused on flipping over the zones you can't uh, get into the any fight w except of course the planes we discussed earlier and really avoid any uh, getting to in any airfield or any bigger engagement between the uh, fighters. 
So you mainly focus on uh, flipping over the zone. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. As you can see, I will go a bit of on the side of the map a bit. So this way here, and I give them time to leave this garrison. Those fighters can go into the middle to have have them like get them get some fight and start uh, engage in this uh, center of the map. And when they be busy there, then I will uh, attack this. Um, zone and I will try to flip this over so that's the main uh, tactic like we can call it let's say ninja tactic we just go in on the side of the map and we sneak behind the um, sectors where there is no um, fighters and we simply uh, flip them over by taking out the uh, defense aircraft and as an easy target obviously so let's zoom up everything and this plane is Overall good, it's fun to play, but I wouldn't recommend to anyone who just start the uh, adventure with this game and never play uh, multi-role fighters. It's uh, it's acquired a lot of skill and uh, experience to have a good results in it. Uh, it's have uh, very good rockets, uh, which give you capabilities to take over any zone uh, by your own, even mining factories. So stay stealthy don't go into any overcrowded sector with fighters or multi role fighters and uh, just focus on the flipping over the zones one by one don't defend those zones because if any fighters come in you not really have uh, tools to uh, fight them back like you have you can't get head on with them you have no firepower for that so and you cannot outturn them so just stay away uh, from any zone you just take over and go for another and another that's the best tactic for it so just stay stealthy go under the cloud or any uh, valleys and uh, just sneak on the behind like behind enemy lines we can say and uh, retake the capture zone by enemy you can surprise the enemy like if you if enemy take uh, some garrison and just sneak behind and you retake it and you gain extra points for your team and you keep going and keep going with this so that's the best tactic in my opinion. Uh, you have very good rockets, you can use them as well to take out the aerial targets that require a lot of skills and it's not always like it's not guaranteed that you're gonna um, in head-on attack you're gonna hit every target. It's not that it's not work this way, but still it's gonna help you if you manage to uh, possess this skill and uh, use that in the battle. Okay, that would be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the watching and find it useful. Uh, please leave a comment below if you have uh, any idea or you want to add something to this. Um, and subscribe, of course, for our next future video. Uh, and I hope I see you guys in the next one. Take care.